uncertainty. That is the word that best describes Indonesia's economic future. Global economic slowdown, coupled with the ripple effects from the US-China trade war, has had a subsequent effect on the Indonesian economy. Currently, annual GDP growth hovers at around 5%, below the government target of 7%, and this is barely sufficient to help Indonesia escape the middle income trap. As such, it is imperative that we muster all the policy instruments at our disposal. One of the most crucial instruments is through tax reform. Currently, Indonesia's economy suffers from low levels of private investment, which can be attributed in large part to the fact that companies in Indonesia often face a very difficult taxation environment. A myriad of conflicting and outdated laws has made taxation in Indonesia a notoriously difficult affair to deal with. It is for these reasons that the government has proposed a set of policy reforms aimed at reducing the total tax burden faced by companies, both in administrative but also in nominal terms. These laws and regulations are collectively contained along with other policy reforms in what is known as the Omnibus Law. Through the Omnibus Law, the government aims to optimize national development through economic improvements. There are five opportunities resulting from the tax reform which will support these improvements. One is to increase investment funding by reducing corporate income tax from 25% to 20% gradually, renewing the tax deduction system for newly listed companies, and removing the income tax for domestic and foreign dependents with certain requirements. Two is to renew the tax system specifically to determine the domestic and foreign income tax subject and to establish the territorial taxation system. Three is to encourage voluntary compliance from the taxpayers by increasing the rights for crediting input tax and creating a new fair and educative administrative sanction with progressive time span. Four is to place new facilities for the tax system such as tax holidays, super deductions, and income tax facilities for special economic zones and treasury notes. Five is to balance the level playing field between conventional and digital transactions by assigning the foreign tax subject as the service provider and the withholder for the VAT on imports of intangible goods and services such as Spotify or Netflix, and also by shifting the definition of permanent establishment from physical presence basis to economic presence basis. On the flip side, the successful implementation of the tax reform faces significant challenges and issues which have to be addressed. Firstly, the shifting of the tax regime from the current worldwide income tax system to a more territorial focus poses a risk of increasing tax avoidance and capital flight, particularly for high net worth individuals and corporations with large amount of assets stored abroad. Secondly, the move to reduce sanction for non-compliance might instead encourage non-compliance due to the reduced cost of not paying taxes on time. While the omnibus law serves the main objective of increasing foreign investment, it will run the risk of decreasing tax receipt from the current taxpayer. Thirdly, while the reform proposed by the omnibus law seeks to close the tax avoidance loopholes, this alone doesn't address the pressing concern of foreign investors regarding the complex and convoluted bureaucracy in circular Indonesian tax system. We must keep in mind that the omnibus law in the context of tax reform has the main goal of increasing foreign investments in order to boost domestic economic growth. As such, relaxations on tax regulation poses itself as a double-edged sword with the main risk of declining the tax receipts. Meanwhile, another main objective of the tax reform is to put in place a VAT collecting mechanism for foreign digital-based companies who operate in Indonesia such as Google, Facebook, and Netflix. If this system is successfully implemented, it could serve as a solution for the previous problem of tax receipts. The lost tax receipts from the relaxed tax regulations could be offset by the additional revenue from the digital companies. Additionally, this could also level the playing field for local tax startups such as Tokopedia, which would in turn help the economy grow even further. These reforms can be further supported by integration of tax data through the core tax system which will widen the tax base and revitalize usage of the national identity number. Finally, having successfully enacted reforms on the tax code through the omnibus law, we must also keep a close eye on implementation and execution by further streamlining bureaucratic processes which are currently notoriously difficult. In the end, it must be seen to that the entire tax reform process is in line with the tax reform agenda as a whole.